thank you all for joining in. I'm going to spend some time with you talking about the art and science of mixology uh, and how to do it at home at these times when we're all locked in. So everything I have here is what I had uh, either in my bar or in my refrigerator or in my kitchen. And that's what I've used today uh, to make the drinks that I'm going to show you. But before I get into the actual art of mixology, uh, let me just take you through a little bit about how to mix at home and what you need to have uh, and what will make your life easier when you want to mix drinks at home. So the most important thing, of course, is to have a reasonable uh, amount of glassware. Now, I'm one of those people who collects glassware all the time. Uh, wherever I go, my eye first goes to glassware and I just randomly keep buying. But the idea is buy more of what you're going to use more and less of what you use once in a while. You obviously know the kind of entertaining that you do and your friends. So that should kind of make it pretty easy. So obviously, long drink glasses like this, which can work for almost anything, 12 is the minimum that you want to have because you will use it all the time. If we were talking about a glass like this or a rocks glass, then this is great for making cocktails as well as for serving whiskey straight. Again, um, 12 or two of two different kinds, maybe six each, maybe six of one kind and six of another. And that should do um, it for you guys completely without any trouble at all. You'll be able to serve whiskey as well as um, make drinks and cocktails with it. Um, these are the two most widely used glasses. After that, of course, it's about what you like and what you don't. Um, this is a really nice glass. It's, it's a coupe, but doubles up as a margarita glass as well. So when you want to make a drink that's cold but does not have any ice in it, this is a good glass to use. It's long stem. You hold it like this so that your palms don't warm up the drink uh, because once you start holding it from the bowl, and this goes across for almost any drink that you have in a stem glass which does not have ice in it. You don't want to hold it by the bowl. Otherwise, the warmth from your palm will start warming up the drink as well. Um, this is a martini glass. Again, a glass that uh, is used for martinis and a lot of other drinks that don't have ice in them. Uh, it's a great glass to have. Apart from that, uh, you can just, you know, go by gut instinct. If you like a glass really well, I mean, this is one of those glasses that I like. Uh, which I use across the board. It's a glass that I use for wine sometimes, but it's also a glass that I use for cocktails. I'm going to use it today. And honestly, even an old jam jar, even that works pretty much well if you want to serve a drink on ice. I think it's really cute and uh, it's a great way of recycling all the stuff that we have at home. Instead of throwing all the bottles away, keep them, clean them, and you can actually use them. You can use them both as a glass. You can also use it to shake a drink, if you keep uh, the cap on, you can actually mix your drink instead of a cocktail shaker. If you don't have, you can simply put everything on ice in this, put the cap on, shake it, and then pour it, or even serve it in the same glass itself. So very, very multi-purpose, this jam jar. Once you've got that, then of course, um, if you're going to uh, make cocktails for a party, you want to plan in advance. Don't make more than three. Um, pre-make everything. Almost every cocktail there is can actually be pre-made three days in advance, um, mixed all up, kept in a bottle and then kept in the refrigerator. Once you've got that, then on the day, you can actually have a good time with your friends because you don't have to keep making every single drink. All you do is get your glasses ready, get the ice ready, um, a little bit of a garnish on top to make it look good, and then simply pour it from the bottle itself. So it's a great way of making cocktails for a party and yet not having to stand at the bar all evening and make it for one single person. Three cocktails, three bottles, all pre-makes, all ready. Um, and that should be really, really good. So um, today, everything that I'm using is made in India, grown in India. Um, it's all about us. It's all about the India that we want to um, make for ourselves. Um, you know, our government has been talking a lot about make in India and self-reliance. And I think uh, a couple of days ago when the Prime Minister was speaking, he was very vociferous about go vocal for local. I think that's what I've taken away 
and, and that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, I'm vocal for local. I'm a champion of everything that's made in India and everything that I make today, I'm going to use spirits that are made 100% in India. Fantastic products by brave young men who have decided to literally um, go across everything that should naturally be telling them not to and stand there and make and give us some fantastic products. So let me just start by making my first drink. It's a really nice drink. It's a tall drink, cool drink, especially good for the summer that we're having. I mean, the mercury is rising crazily every single day and it's hot, hot, hot. And for that, uh, we can make this really, really uh, interesting drink. It's something that you can make from what you have in the kitchen. And what I have here is cucumber juice. All I did was took a cucumber, peeled it, cut it, blitzed it in my mixer and then strained out the juice. That's all I've done. So it's just 100% cucumber juice. Now let's see what we can do with this cucumber juice. I've got the tall glass. The other thing that's extremely important while mixing and wanting to mix cocktails is ice. Now that is our cheapest ingredient, yet our most important ingredient. Making and having enough ice, I cannot begin to stress how important it is. You know, I usually start making ice two, three days ahead and I bag the ice in Ziploc bags and put it back into the freezer so I have enough and more ice. And that's what I did for today as well. There was no way I would, I would be able to, you know, pick up my phone and order ice in. So I started making ice yesterday and I kept filling it up so that today I would have enough ice. I hope to God I had enough. Um, so that's how we're going to start. Ice, very, very important. If you see this piece of equipment that I'm going to use, some few may recognize it. It was the old Aka scoop that we used to use in the, in the homes once upon a time. I remember my mom using this as an Aka scoop. Uh, now this one's got holes in it, and it's a great way of getting ice from the ice bucket into your glass. I mean, I don't like ice storms, honestly, because I keep dropping ice cubes. Instead of it going in the glass, it goes in, on the floor, and one at a time, I'm just not patient enough. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, and that is a technique that is very important. Start with ice, everything else later. I'm going to first fill the glass with ice. Okay, this one's, there we go. All right, so we have a glass that's completely filled with ice. Into this, I'm going to put the cucumber juice. See, as simple as that. Now, to make it more interesting, what I have here from my kitchen garden is curry patta. And I'm going to use the curry patta to give flavor to the cucumber. I think cucumber and curry leaf is a fantastic combination. So I'm just going to bring out some smell. I've got, and some of you might recognize this one as well. Um, used to uh, make dals and lassis. I call this my muddler. I use this uh, to do all kinds of things in my bar and I'm going to use this simply I'm simply hitting the leaf with this. Oh my god now I've got some great flavor coming out of the curry patta and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this into my drink. I'm going to take all the curry patta and put it into my drink. And now I'm going to take a wedge of lime and I'm going to simply squeeze the wedge of lime over the ice, over the curry patta, and drop the peel in. And yes, I did sanitize my hands before I began. And that is absolutely it. I'm simply going to now fill this with tonic. Spoon. Give it a stir. Put a little more curry patta on top. 
just to make it look pretty. And there you have it, the cucumber. And this one, the cucumber and curry leaf lemonade with tonic. Now, you can see that I've made this without alcohol because I think it's not fair to have or to talk to people who only drink. However, so for those of you who don't like alcohol or who are teetotalers, this is how you can give yourself a fantastic drink that actually looks like a cocktail, but no one will ever know that you're not drinking. But to make this alcoholic, you can see I've left some space on top. What I'm going to do is use this fantastic gin. This is greater than gin made in Goa uh, by two really nice people, uh, people that I've known for a while. Uh, this is India's first really fantastic actual gin made the right way. It's called Greater Than and it has the most amazing, amazing flavor. So I'm going to simply use 30 ml of this really nice gin. One more stir. And now you have a cucumber and curry leaf collins, which uses gin. You can use any white spirit you like, but I like gin and cucumber. Um, it sounds so very English, doesn't it? So uh, that's what I have for you smells brilliant and I can promise you it tastes even more brilliant. So give it a shot, try it out. For those of you, I have one more tip for those of you who don't like tonic and I don't know why, but there are a fair amount of people who don't like tonic. What you can do is replace the tonic by using Sprite or 7-Up and if you don't want it that sweet, use three-fourths of the Sprite or 7-Up and one-fourth one of just simple club soda and mix it up. So you can do a Sprite soda, 7-Up soda mix um, to the sweetness level that you like. And again, that drink also will be absolutely fantastic. I am a sucker for tonic, so that's what I've got here. So a really nice gin and tonic with cucumber and curry leaf. Cheers. Um, I'm, I'm gonna pass it on to a couple of people um, I have here, and maybe you'll hear their oohs and ahs which will tell you that it was actually a good drink. And I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm going to get a few things out of the way. Delicious. I hope you heard that sound which said delicious. Okay. So that was a gin and tonic using greater than gin, cucumber, curry leaf, tonic with a squeeze of lime. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's go on to the next drink. For that, I have a mixing glass so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, this one is um, what I call the living tree. Uh, this one is called the living tree and it's actually dedicated to the Mahua tree, which is the tree of life for and hope for tribals across our country, especially in the heart of India, the middle of India, um, areas surrounding um, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, uh, that entire belt where the tribals live and the mahua trees that trees that grow there in uh, the jungle um, and, and that's a tree that kind of is a tree of hope because they use every single part of it and for that i'm going to use um, a really exceptional spirit made by again an exceptionally brave indian gentleman it's called dj mahua uh, desmond ji uh, my desmond nazareth who's uh, again making this in andhra pradesh uh, and bottling it in Goa. So again, a fantastic spirit made from the Mahua flowers, um, which are sweet, full of sugar. And uh, these are then dried and then they are steeped and um, all that sugar converts into this beautiful Mahua and it has the most fantastic flavor ever. So here goes. Into my mixing glass, um, I'm going to start adding the liquids first. And then I will add the ice because it's warm and I don't want the ice to melt and water down the drink. Ideally, I would have started with the ice and poured everything on the ice so that it all gets off to a really quick start. Okay. 
Now for this, I have some orange juice. Again, orange juice, um, which is um, a tetra pack. You can use fresh orange juice. Obviously in this lockdown, I can't get any fresh oranges. So a tetra pack it is. Uh, it's real orange juice and I think it's pretty um, nice. I'm going to use 45 ml of orange juice. Now, to give this additional flavor, I'm going to use kokum syrup. Now this is again something that I made this afternoon uh, because I didn't have a bottle of ready-made kokum syrup, but I know that I have kokum in my refrigerator. This is the wet kokum. Um, in English, it's simply called Garcinia indica. Um, but what I did is I simply boiled the kokum with some water. And as soon as it came to the boil and it started releasing its color and flavor into the liquid, I added sugar and allowed it to cool down with the sugar so that the sugar melted and turned into a bright red syrup, which has the flavor and the tartness and the color of kokum and sweetness from the sugar. All right, so I'm going to use about 15 ml of kokum syrup. And that's going to give this beautiful color. Again, a little lime. Because I want some freshness there. I'm going to leave the spoon in. I'm going to use 45 ml. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. 45 ml of the mahua. It's really the world's first spirit to be actually distilled from a flower. There is no other spirit in the world that is distilled from a flower. And it comes from our country, India. Can you imagine? All right, I'm gonna just give it a stir and I'm gonna taste it to see whether my balance of sweet and sour is right. Yes, I like it. And I can taste the mahua, it's, wow, really, really good. Okay, now just to perk it up a little, I'm going to do some, a little bit of black pepper in it. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to shake it, but I'm going to fill it. I'm going to shake it in this. So here we go. I'll show you how much ice I've put in once I've got it all in. So the trick is to have more ice than the liquid. And if you look inside, you can see that it's almost three fourths full. I want the level of the liquid to be actually below the ice. And the reason for that is pure science. When I pour this on the ice, it's going to fill in the gaps. And then when I shake it, there's going to be friction. Now when there is friction, there's heat generated. And if I don't add the extra ice, then the heat generated will start breaking down the ice, melting it, and watering down my drink. But this way, with the extra ice, it actually counteracts the effect of the heat, uh, which comes from the friction, keeping the drink cold, and yet not watering it down. Who said mixologists were simply people who stood behind the bar? No way. Okay. And we'll hope that this behaves. Okay, that's great. I've given it a nice shake. Looks good. 
And then this is my chosen glass. I'm simply going to pour it all. And we have this beautiful drink. And on top, all I'm going to do is put the whole coconut. And that's about it. Now, if you like it spicy, you can actually add the green chili while you're mixing this. Cut a slice and put that slice in. Shake it. And you can also get that slightly spicy flavor. I've simply used black pepper and I'm going to put a teeny weeny bit of the black pepper on top of my drink as well. And there you have it. With makua, orange juice, kokum syrup, and a little bit of lime and black pepper. It's a beautiful drink. For the, and, 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 and this is in honor of the mahua tree and the tribals who have spent a lifetime under this tree making the mahua a spirit um, finally bottled for us. Um, and it's, it's um, literally a, a tribute to the hard work that they have put in in all these years. Cheers. If you can't find this bottle of mahua, I think it's only available in Goa and Daniel at the moment. So but make that effort. I think it's, you know, well worth it. It's a great drink and oh my God. I think it's just fantastic. I can taste the mahua, the orange juice and the lime have made it fresh. The kokum has given it sweetness and yet I get that rustic earthy flavor of the kokum coming through. It's a great drink. Again, at home right now, if you don't have orange juice, but you have pineapple juice instead, it'll work. If you don't and you have guava juice instead, that will work too. What more can I say? It's a drink that will work with whatever you have. If you have a juice that's nice and fresh and fruity and you just do what I did, you'll have a great drink on your hand. Here we go. I'm going to pass this one again because I cannot bear to see a great drink wasted. So give me a second and I'm back. All right. So that was drink A and that was drink B. And I'm going to just keep these things aside so that we have a little space before we go on to our third drink. And the third drink I'm going to do is a whiskey drink. It's a whiskey sour with a twist. Um, and for this, I'm going to use a really fantastic whiskey. Again, made in India, in Goa. Really, I should have made Feni as well today because this is all about, almost about Goa. Um, it's the Paul John single malt and the, the one that I'm using is the edited variant which has just that hint of smoke and peatiness in it. The twist I'm giving to my whiskey sour is I'm actually going to use fruits to flavor this whiskey sour. Um, grape and pomegranate. So here goes. I'm going to begin with the grapes. All right, I've got a few grapes in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish these grapes literally squish them, get them to break and release their juices and flavor. And I'm afraid to go far, to actually make a sound and go heavy duty on them because um, I've kind of balanced my iPad really precariously so that you can see what I'm doing. I don't want it to fall. But I will show it to you the minute I'm done because I'm really not sure how much you can see and how much is kind of hidden from you but the minute I've done this squishing I'm going to show you
All right, here you have it. If you can see this, there were grapes and now it's all squished up. Okay, squished green grapes, all the juice is out. And that's going to go into my whiskey sour. Cool. Now, for some pomegranate juice, about 45 ml of the pomegranate juice. So that's all of it. of the whiskey. This is the beautiful Paul John edited. Fruity yet with that beautiful hint of smoke and peat. Into this I'm going to put in one spoon of powdered sugar. Lots of lime. So you'll see one, two, and still one more. All right then, I'm going to give it a stir. So grapes are still available in the market. Uh, when I went out, I found grapes and I found pomegranate as well. So that's what I had in my refrigerator and that's what I've used. Very nice. Very, very nice. I can't tell you how brilliant it tastes right now. I wish you could taste it with me, honestly. Okay then, back to shaking and it... Time to fill the shaker, just like I did the last time. A lot of it, three fourths. Okay, you can see that, that's three fourths of my shaker. Okay then. Over the ice it goes. This one's a bit of a okay. There we go. This looks good. My hands really cold. So that tells you that the drink is going to be absolutely fantastic. All right, then I have my glass. I'm just going to get the ice. Just give me two seconds, Shannon. That, not too much, just a little bit. I just need it for one glass. Sorry, I had to get help because I didn't want the ice to melt. Okay, so I filled my glass with ice now, and I'm going to strain this drink. I'm going to strain this. And then, Just a little bit of 
pomegranate. And I have a stick with a couple of grapes on it. Oops, that I'm just going to stick in so it stays. And there you have it. I hope you can see it. It's the pomegranate and grape whiskey sour with Paul John single malt, the edited version. I hope you had a really good time with this and I'm going to quickly have a sip because really it's my favorite in the world. Oh, this is delicious. So today, just to sum it all up, we started with a tall drink, the cucumber and curry leaf um, gin and tonic made with greater than gin, uh, which two very young entrepreneurs, um, Anand Birmani and Vaibhav Singh, have really put their heart and soul into making this fantastic product. Um, and then we made um, the second drink, which is uh, in honor of the mahua tree, which used orange juice, mahua, uh, kokum syrup with a little bit of black pepper, or shook up and poured into the glass. And the last drink that we made was the whiskey sour, so that was with the Desmond G. Mahua. And the last drink, the whiskey sour with grape and pomegranate um, made with the Paul John single malt. These are the three drinks that I uh, have for you today. And I'm really, really hoping that some of you can actually try it and um, you enjoyed it and you found uh, what I said and what I did and what I showed you useful. And now I'm going to kind of hand it back to Nijansh. Um, and maybe he's made a record of some of the questions that you have posed to him. And I'm going to move away from my bar and sit down so I can actually answer your questions peacefully. Um, thank you again for your patience. Um, and um, really, cheers. And let's hope uh, that this lockdown uh, gets lifted and we are able to resume our lives. But until then, stay home and stay safe and have a great evening. Thank you, Mish Vasu. So, Thank you so much for those refreshing and delicious things. I really th wish that I was not watching this virtually and sharing it with you. So, some questions which have come up is, uh, Hana is asking, can, can you share the ratio of the cucumber juice to the tonic water in the first drink? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's simply about uh, 45 ml of the cucumber juice. So, you can go right up to 60 ml of cucumber juice and that works as well. And it was very fine cucumber juice. All right. Yeah, I had just simply blitzed the cucumber and I had strained the cucumber. So um, I could, you know, just um, simply um, strain it and use it. So about 60 ml of cucumber juice works well with the gin. And you can increase the gin if you have a tall glass. You can use 60 ml of the gin as well and just pour more tonic. All right. I wanted it light. And therefore, I used only 30 ml. Okay. Uh, Rujal Bhatt is asking, can we use any other spirit instead of Mohua? Yes, absolutely. In this drink, you can use um, rum. Rum works really well with this drink. Uh, so yes, go ahead and use uh, the monk quite happily. Um, if you like white spirits, honestly, you can switch to any white spirit and it'll still work really well. Uh, Darpan Maurya wants to know, uh, what did you add before in the mahua drink before shaking? So, is it club soda? Or pepper. Soda? Black pepper. Fresh black pepper. I just used the mill. Uh, and what is the ratio of uh, wet cocoa to water to sugar in the drink? Conrad wants to know. Oh my god. Okay. So honestly, today, Conrad, I did not measure anything. I just took a saucepan and I think I, I used about a uh, 100 grams of the wet kokum. And to that, I added approximately 500 ml uh, of water and I allowed it to boil and reduce. And then I added two cups of sugar to it and let it, um, you know, settle down. This was a very quick thing that I did. In fact, I have not had time to actually work out to see how it will work eventually. I just simply tasted it and I knew that it was sweet enough for me to use in the drink and that's it. But you have to let it sit and then you have to kind of uh, sieve it with a fine cloth because 
otherwise you get a little bit of those little um, bits of kokum at the end even though you've sieved it um small bits of dry kokum from the center still tend to be at the bottom so you got to let it sit for a bit um and uh, then you know then j- just use it yeah bottle it and keep it in your refrigerator and use it um and then make kokum sharbat out of it also if you like so all of these drinks work even without alcohol uh it is good even without alcohol so you know if you just omit the alcohol for those of you who don't drink if you simply omit the alcohol uh, they all make some fantastic drinks as well okay uh an anonymous attendee wants to know can you discuss something about bar etiquettes can you discuss bar etiquettes um if it's from the point of view of you as a guest in a bar when you go to a bar honestly just be polite and just be nice to the bartender and your servers if you are polite and if you are nice to them uh, trust me you will get the best service ever um that's the only tip i have for you you can ask them questions if you don't know that's fine um but if you talk to a bartender and if he offers you a drink um, you can simply the best way to to make sure you get something that you like is if there are a couple of things that you hate the most then that's what you want to bring up right in the beginning saying look as long as you don't use this and this i'm sort of okay with whatever you do or you can say i i don't like drinks too sweet or i'd like my drink nice and sweet and fruity apart from that if you're just if you're just polite and if you're nice to them uh, you know that's the best bar etiquette i can tell you um if you if you're worried about what to do with the garnish that comes with your cocktail don't worry too much about it you can lift it out of your glass and keep it on the side on your plate if you like it and if you think it's edible eat it you can dunk it inside your drink and continue drinking and that's also cool if you have any specific questions though yeah um it would help me because i don't know from what perspective you want to know bar etiquette so uh, dipshika wants to know uh, what can go well with something like jack daniels other than coke um you can use it with a lot of fruit juices actually jack and cranberry juice tastes well a uh, jack and lemonade or sprite or lemonade tastes really really good with a squeeze of lime uh, jack and orange juice uh, is really nice as well um so yeah you can have a cold coffee with uh, jack daniels as well and that's also really cool And so yeah jack and apple juice works well anything uh, we can do to make baileys more interesting to make baileys more interesting yeah. it's interesting on its own <laughs> just pour it a nice and drink or keep the bottle in the refrigerator nice and cold and drink it straight but no you can um, actually um have baileys on on your coffee it tastes good you can have baileys on ice cream so you can have vanilla ice cream with baileys or chocolate ice cream with baileys and that tastes really good hot chocolate with baileys again really fantastic um if you want to make a drink with baileys um you can use baileys with a coffee liqueur vodka coffee liqueur baileys on ice and just stir it and that tastes really good so um that's called a mud slide and um yeah you can do a lot of things with baileys you can uh, any any coffee based drink you can add baileys to and it just takes it to another level you can pour it on desserts as well take a chocolate mousse and pour baileys on it i can go on i mean it's endless all right uh an anonymous attendee wants to know uh, can you talk about food pairings do indian spirits work great with indian cuisine or how does it go well well it would depend actually yes we can pair uh, most easily um we can do indian wine with indian food we can do i've done whiskey and indian food as well So yes they pair uh, quite beautifully uh, you just simply need to know what you're doing and why you're doing it um and therefore once you know the flavor of the food you can then choose the right spirit that will work with that flavor and then serve it in the right way we're not just talking about pouring a spirit straight into a glass and sipping alongside no uh, you have to do something to it you have to cool it down because otherwise it will just give you an alcohol burn and the alcohol burn with spicy food will just take it to another level So no you have to cool it down uh, you can do pairing in different ways you can do an alternate pairing of cold whiskey and a whiskey cocktail uh, you can do um, whiskey in food uh, there's so many different ways in which you can do pairing with whiskey uh, similarly you can do a whiskey and cocktail whiskey and tequila pairing um, all kinds of things are possible with indian food um, i i don't think um, contrary to popular belief that wine uh, and indian food don't go well together 
Um, I don't believe that at all. There's always going to be something you can do and some wine which will work with the kind of food that you have. You just need to understand the wine and understand the food to be able to pair it. Uh, so what's your favorite uh, Paul John uh, edition? Can we use a different one if we don't have the edited one? Yes, absolutely. You can use uh, Paul John Brilliance. Uh, you can use Nirvana, which is a very light, soft version. If you don't like um, a smoky uh, whiskey, you can use Brilliance, which is their sweeter, beautiful, fruity whiskey with no ounce of no smokiness at all. And they have a very light version, which is uh, also an entry-level single malt called Nirvana, uh, which uh, for, especially for beginners who are not big on whiskey, if you make your whiskey sour with Nirvana, um, it'll work really beautifully. For me, Edited is one of my favorites. Uh, also, the single cask is something that I like uh, very much. Uh, Dhanashree wants to know what other juice can go with grape if we don't have pomegranate in the whiskey sour. In the whiskey sour, you can use orange juice. Orange and grape work really well. In fact, if you get black grapes, you don't even need to add any other juice. You can even with grapes on their own, uh, you can actually make a great uh, whiskey sour. Instead of, if you're not going to use another juice, uh, you can simply use um, two spoons of sugar instead of one spoon that I use. I used one spoon because I know the pomegranate juice. Therefore, I used only one spoon of sugar, but otherwise you can use only grape. Uh, and uh, especially with black grape, it makes the drink look really beautiful. It almost turns into a nice purple color. But you can make a whiskey sour using only orange juice as well, just 30 ml of orange juice with a little sugar and shake it and that works really well as well. So it depends on what you have at home. Honestly, I discovered the grapes only by accident because I didn't have anything else. And one evening I was trying it out and I tried it out with grape. I had black grapes that day. And I thought, suppose I use black grapes, how will it taste? And I made the whiskey sour with black grape and it looked and uh, tasted absolutely fantastic. And that's how I actually got the idea of using um, the green grapes today and adding a little bit of that pomegranate juice just for the color and flavor. Okay. Uh, Sagar wants to know, can we use uh, basil or mint instead of curry patta? Absolutely. You can use whatever you like. If you like mint and if you like basil with cucumber, go ahead and use it. Uh, no problem at all, by all means. Remember that drinking or uh, tasting cocktails is your own palate and your own flavor. So, um, and then take to other levels. So, whatever it is that you like best is what you can use. Um, sage works beautifully with cucumber as well. So, if you like that, uh, go ahead and use it. As long as you get it there and it tastes good in your mouth and you think it's fresh, it's going to work. All right. Uh, thank you so much for answering those questions. Going by the comments, it was a very, people are very excited about making their own drinks right now. Uh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time, ma'am. It was a great session with you.